Hey guys, this is my render loop, and you can achieve a good 500 frames per second if you're not using a back buffer. If you had the back buffer on, you can get uh, whatever this is, and then you can add about a good couple hundred sprites before you bog it down. So it's pretty decent uh, for a render window that only uses .NET Framework uh, code. A lot of people who write documents on Windows Forms, render loops, write the most ridiculous code using thread sleeps and, and unnecessary loops and stuff. Um, my logic here, I can, I'm able to achieve consistent animation, and that's mainly what I will be talking about in this video. I will not go over the uh, render window in detail because it would just take too long for me to explain it. Um, I'm going to start off with the the, uh, the solution here. I've got the game engine form, and that form contains all of the game engine logic. And then I've got the render window, which abstracts you from the game engine logic, so you can just have your rendering stuff in a different form class. And then I've got the music stuff, and that's everything that needs to be globally available, like the back buffer. And then the sprite class is pretty basic. It just has a location, a size, and whatnot, and uh, something that you want to use to draw objects to screen. And then I've got my binary sprite. That's a derivation of the sprite class, and that's what the ones and zeros are. So I'm going to show you how to achieve consistent animation. Uh, this is the most important part of this project here. So I'm going to go to my game engine class. And you'll notice right off the bat that I'm in my on paint method using a stopwatch. And so I'm going to start my stopwatch. I'm going to do some rendering. And then I'm going to stop the stopwatch. And then I'm going to get the render time in decaseconds, make it globally available. I do believe it's decaseconds. It doesn't really matter as long as it's consistently applied to your animations. Okay, and that's pretty much it for consistent animation in this class. Let's go over to the binary sprite where it's actually applied. Okay, so here I'm drawing the object within the object. I'm not going to actually have my drawing logic in one spot because that would just overcomplicate stuff. So yeah, I'm applying the movement, the animation, uh, here in the Y of the, the point. <laughs> Sorry, I'm creating a new point here and I'm incrementing Y by the move speed times the render time. Okay, so the move speed is like 500 or something right now, and that's a, pretty much a multiplier saying how fast the object's going to move in relation to other objects. And then the render time is also a multiplier, and that's just going to. Um, that's, so basically, the the more the the more time it takes to render something, the further you want to move on the y-axis, and you want to apply this logic to moving backwards and forwards on both axes, or xi or whatever you want to call it. So yeah, that's just basically how it is. The faster the the faster the loop can perform, the slower your your animation increment should be and vice versa. So yeah, this is my first decent uh, render loop in a while and I'm going to be working on it and stuff and adding interesting things to it and I'll make it I'll make some videos on it and update the source of course and I hope that you can dissect it and learn a bit about the logic within it because I've I've been really having a hard time explaining the details of this.